Hi, welcome back and welcome to Sidekick COO. I'm Sandra B, your Sidekick COO, and today we're going to talk a little bit about customer service. So this video is actually inspired by a lot of advice that I've been seeing in a lot of different groups that I'm in where somebody has a more difficult customer that they need to respond to and often the advice that is given is kind of terrible. So I want to give a quick resource to help people provide really, really great customer service. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's lots of ways to hone your customer service and really surprise and delight your customers. But these are kind of like the basic tips that I would highly recommend that I see a lot of people not doing in uh, the online business space. So today we're going to be covering four do's and a don't for customer service. So first thing you do want to have a policy or a process that you're going to follow, even if it is just you doing your customer service, you're handling everything, you're, you know, a solopreneur, one person show, that's totally fine. You still want to have some sort of even basic documentation that covers things like turnaround time, your like first contact resolution rate that you want to have, any documentation around refunds, how do you handle that? Do you ever make exceptions? And what kind of cases do you make exceptions? What kind of alternatives can you offer to somebody? And how do you handle things like people needing access to things, password resets, user login details, and things like that? How does that all happen? Having that all documented and the expectations laid out will really help you when you go to answer uh, emails. Because one, you can copy and paste a lot of uh, standard kind of template answers, especially like in regards to password resets and login details, things like that. But also when you're dealing with like a potentially difficult scenario, um, you don't have to kind of rethink everything all the time. So if somebody's asking for a refund, you can kind of go to your policy and see what your guidelines are there and determine if this falls into it. I do want to stress that even when you have a policy, I highly recommend sticking to it as much as possible, but remembering that we're all human and sometimes exceptions should probably be made in the name of humanity, um, compassion, and also great customer service. So these are guidelines for sure, but also knowing that in certain situations, it just really does make more sense to do something that's outside of your guidelines. But the guidelines are going to help for the 90% or 95% of the cases where, yeah, it makes sense that you're just going to follow your guidelines as they stand. And anybody who might be doing your customer service for you will know, okay, yes, in this situation, I'm allowed to do X or in this situation, I'm not allowed to do a refund, but I am allowed to offer these types of alternatives, things like that. And having that for yourself will be super handy and save you a lot of time. So do have a policy and process to follow for all of those things. The second do is do ask questions. A lot of time I used to see that people are kind of afraid, especially when it seems to be a potentially difficult interaction, they're afraid to ask questions. They're afraid to open up the dialogue. They just want to answer it and have it be done. Don't ask questions that don't need to be asked. Sometimes we might feel a little bit on the defensive, I guess and feel like we want to ask questions just to make a point. If you're asking a question to make a point, you're not doing your customer service very well. The questions you want to ask are the questions that you genuinely need to know in order to clarify what's happening so that you can come to the best possible resolution for all parties involved. So do ask questions. The next do is do delegate. You want to delegate your customer service as soon as possible, especially if you are someone who finds confrontation a little bit difficult. You are a people pleaser. You hate saying no. You really want people to be happy and like you, especially if anything, any of that resonates with you, then you're going to want to delegate your customer service to a virtual assistant or some other like type of person in order to get that off your plate, because it will make your customer service way better, way easier, more streamlined. It's a win-win for everybody. It's really good for you because you get to distance yourself 
yourself from the experience. You get to distance yourself from the issue and your customers, especially if you're like, if you are the face of your business and people know you and connect with you and blah, blah, blah. Uh, if it's all about you, they then also feel like, oh, well, this isn't so-and-so deciding this against me. This is the policy of the company. So it really does help to build that bit of a barrier between you and the policies of the company. So the fourth do is going to be do embrace both the good and the bad. So we often have uh, trouble where we will embrace one or the other. We, If somebody says something good about us, we may easily accept that because we're awesome and we did, we, we do such a great job and we, um, you know, we provide great customer service or our product is really superior, or we might say, Oh, oof, I don't know. I don't know that that person knows what they're talking about. I feel like, um, you know, I'm really not that good. I don't know. And you might actually question the good things that people are saying about you or your product or your business. So depending on your own personality, a lot of times we will embrace or not the good. And then same with the bad. We will, if somebody says anything bad about us or our company or our process or our product, we'll either say, oh my gosh, this person is right. I need to fix it. I need to do a bunch of stuff to appease them. Or we'll say, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not my ideal client. Um, I'm not even going to bother listening to them. I'm just going to send them on their way. What we need to be doing is accepting all of the good with a grain of salt and all of the bad with a grain of salt. These are just people's opinions. Sometimes it might be fact about things that might have happened, but it's all their emotions and you're really not responsible for how anybody feels good or bad. All you can do is take it, look at it through the lens of your business and decide what of value can I learn here? Can I take away from here? Is this something that I need to action? And if you want to uh, validate the information for yourself, is this in line with what I hear from other people? Sometimes when somebody says something bad about us, if we only hear it from one person, the do we need to action that? Maybe not. Look at it, evaluate it, decide does this make sense for me and my business? And then do with it what you will. If you hear it from more than one person, then maybe the weight of it becomes a little bit more important. But also, it doesn't always necessarily mean you have to change things. Maybe you've just somehow attracted a lot of people who aren't your ideal client. Or maybe, yeah, there's something that you need to fix. But the key is to actually take the time. And that is something that a lot of us don't do in so many areas of our business. So we don't take the time to step back, sit with it and evaluate it before we just jump into responding. So regardless, whether it's good or bad, take a moment, take a breath, really evaluate it, decide, does this ring true? Do I need to action it? Is there anything of value here for me? Any lesson I can learn? Um, any ideas I can glean from this? and then choose to move forward from there. If somebody provides you with some negative feedback, and a lot of the time they'll give you advice on how to make it better, but if it doesn't ring true, like if that advice is not um, good for you, you don't have to argue that point with them. All you have to do is thank them for the advice and let them know that you'll take it into consideration. Because you might take it into consideration, you may have already taken into consideration and decided it's not for you. That's totally fine. They don't need to know all that. Just let them know. Thank you for your, you know, for the information. Um, I, I'll take it into consideration. There's no need to um, be confrontational about it. And then the last thing is don't. So we have our four do's. Um, so the don't is don't chalk up someone's negative feedback or negative experience with them simply being not a fit for you or your business or your product. A lot of the time I'll see people who have someone contact them with um, negative feedback on a product or a service they purchased. They might be a little bit mean or maybe even slightly rude in their email. Um, and the business owner will go into a Facebook group filled with other business owners and, and they'll quote what the person said, 
Usually they won't show the whole email, they'll only quote little parts of it, and then they'll ask for advice. And invariably some of the advice that, that they get back, quite often the main piece of advice that they get back is just ignore them or tell them to go away. They, they're they just not a fit. So, you know, give them a refund and then ban them from buying your service ever again because they're not a fit for your company. They're just not your ideal client. Or just tell them no and don't give any explanation. They're not your ideal client, so who cares? And that is terrible advice. It really is. Honestly, yes, in some situations, that is true, that they are not your ideal client and that you know, there's no way you could possibly appease them because they're just that type of person or they're just in that type of mood. That does happen, but you, one, often cannot tell that by the first email. Um, and two, it doesn't mean that they are not worthy of your time. They are, it doesn't mean that they don't deserve a little bit of your respect and time and attention. You don't have to give them all of your time and attention. I don't want you to like waste days and weeks on trying to appease them, but to just like brush them off in that first interaction, I, I don't believe is really great customer service and I don't think it's the way to go. Some of my best customer service stories have been people who started off really upset and I just took the time to try and understand what was happening and where they were coming from, found a solution that could potentially work. A lot of the time it wasn't a perfect solution for them, but they felt heard. They understood that I was trying. Um, they felt seen, they felt cared for. And in the end, they were really grateful, ended up buying a ton more from me and it ended up being a really good situation. Yes, for sure, there are some people who doesn't matter what you do, you're not going to make them happy. But probably 90% of the time, you can at least make the person happy um, in some way or at least be them be in a neutral tone before they leave. It's not great customer service to just cut somebody loose without at least trying a little bit. Now, that's not to say that you need to deal with abuse. If somebody is being abusive towards you, you can certainly just tell them I am not sorry we don't we don't accept this we don't work with people who are abusive and this is what we catalog as abusive um that is totally fine don't work with somebody or don't try and work with somebody who's abusive or anything like that but if somebody's just being a little bit rude we all have bad days we all have days where we're probably a little shorter with other with people than we normally are and giving people the benefit of the doubt will really help you to be provide better customer service just in general. So that's, that's my soapbox moment for, you know, just trying to be nice. Everybody deserves a little bit of kindness. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't cost you much to give it. Now, I thought I'd wrap this up with a few tips for providing great customer service. One thing you can do to provide great customer service is to set the expectation as to your turnaround time and what your office hours are by putting that information in the signature of your emails, in uh, any purchase confirmation emails that you might send out. Like when somebody buys that email that you send out that says, oh, thanks for buying or whatever, have that information in there for customer service um, hours and turnaround time. You can put it in your out of office uh, reply so that people understand when you could, not just when you're going to reply to them when you get back in the office because you're away, but also when they can normally expect to hear from you in your general customer service hours. If you're selling a course or a membership or anything like that, and there's a members area, you can make sure that that data is in there somewhere and easily accessible. Um, a lot of times when you have a course, you might have a, a welcome video that you have people watch. You can put that information in there. So making sure that people understand what your customer service hours are super, super handy. Another tip for providing great customer service, especially if you're doing it all on your own or you're just having a high volume of requests right now, set an out of office. So just to have an out of office that runs all the time that has all of the answers to the most common customer service issues that you come across and then let people know when they can expect to hear back from a real live person. And you can even in there say, um, if, if this answered your question, please let me know. And then what will happen is anybody that answers and saying, yep, 
question answered. Thanks so much. You don't have to do anything with that email now. And then you're only left with people that you actually have to respond to. So that can be super handy. If people don't have to wait to get a response for something, always a win. Another tip for providing great customer service is if you have a question, like somebody sent you an email or whatnot, and you know that it's going to take you a little bit to get an answer to that. What I've seen some people do is they just mark it unread. And then when they get to it, they get to it. And it might be a day later, an hour later, two days later, or a week later. And the problem is that person who sent you that email, they have no idea. They don't know that you got it. They don't know that you read it. They don't know that you're looking into it. They don't know when to, they can expect to receive a response from you. So either they're going to have to follow up with you, which is annoying. So it's putting them into a position they shouldn't have to be in, or they're going to just assume that you aren't there, don't care, whatnot, and they'll chalk it up to bad customer service. And that will be a story for later. So what you want to do instead is reply to them right away. Take five seconds to say, Hey, thanks so much for your email. I uh, just wanted to let you know, it's going to take me a little bit to look into it. I just need a little bit of time to look into it, or we're looking into it currently, what, however you want to word it, and then give them some sort of expectation as to when they can hear back from you. And then you're going to want to make sure that you actually send an email back to them in the timeline that you stated. So if you said, I need a couple of days to look into it, I'll get back to you on Monday, then you need to make sure that it gets put somewhere for you to respond back to them Monday or earlier so that they're not left wondering what's happening. Because if Tuesday rolls around, then that's just as bad as if you had have just waited and not responded to them at all because they're left in that same position. They don't know, like, did you forget? Um, did you just decide that they weren't worth it or what's happening? They have no idea. So you need to make sure that you follow up. And that brings me to my last tip for great customer service. And that is having some way of following up with people, having a process in place so that you can make sure that you follow up with people, but then also like surprise and delight people by following up with them. So sometimes you might have a customer service request come in and you deal with it. You give them the answer and they reply and say, thanks so much. That was, you know, that's great or whatever. And then maybe a week from now you follow up with them, check in. Is it still going well? Everything's still good. So for instance, somebody contacts you because they can't get into the product that they just bought from you. You resolve that issue, maybe follow up with them a week from now. Hey, I just want to make sure to check in with you, see how things are going. Were, were you able to get in, you know, or what, what did you think of things once you were able to get in or whatever? Those little things, you don't have to do it with everybody, although you could put together a process so that you can, because consistency is really good, but having that process in place to really surprise and delight people, show them that you care, really, really handy. So you can do this a number of ways. My favorite tool for it is I use because all of my customer services just through Gmail. So people just email us and we respond. And I use a tool called Boomerang to just make sure that I don't ever lose track of an email. So I'm going to quickly show it to you um, super, super quick what it looks like. So here you can see this is just a blank email. So a assume that I am sending this email to somebody down at the bottom. So Boomerang is just a, an, an app you can buy. And so if, if you search Boomerang for Gmail or Boomerang for Outlook, you'll be able to find it. They have a Chrome extension as well. I won't get into all the details, but basically what it does is it at the bottom of your email adds this remind me in X number of days menu here. So if I click this, and if I hit send, it's going to remind me about this email in two days, regardless of what else has happened with this email. So if somebody has replied to it or I've replied to it or anything, it's going to bring this email back into my inbox. Um, I can change this scenario here. So I could say, well, only bring it back if they didn't open the email. So if they didn't open the email, I, uh, uh, it would bring it back saying, Hey, you needed to follow up with this. You can use it if not clicked and you can use if no reply. The two that I use the most are if no reply and regardless. So if no reply is I sent something to somebody, you know, especially if there's a question I had for them and I'm waiting for a reply, I'll say if no reply, follow up in X number of days. But sometimes it's something I want to action later. This here, regardless would be a good one. If, um, 
if I was letting them know to that I was looking into something and I was going to follow up with them in X number of days, I could say regardless here. And then it's going to come back into my inbox regardless of what they've done. So whether they've opened it or clicked or anything is going to come back into my inbox on the date that I specify. And then the uh, drop down here will just give you a bunch of um, default time frames. Uh, so in you know one or two hours or whatever, one or two days, tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, or you can set a very specific day and time here. Um, and then my favorite feature is you can actually add a note. So this is like a note to, to self goes here. So you can say, oh, I wanted to follow up with them on this, or I wanted to follow up and ask them this or what, whatever it is, make a note to yourself and hit save. And then you just hit send. And when that after, in this case, after two days, that's just going to hit the top of my inbox, come right back to me as if it's a new email and I will be able to take care of it at that time. I pair this with, um, because I use teamwork for my project management tool. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but over here you can see the little T with the dot just over here on the right hand side. So I pair this with the um, teamwork extension that connects with uh, Gmail so that I will, if it's something where I have to do something, I have to look into something or I have to follow something up or maybe somebody in my team has to follow it up. I can um, create a task from the email using that little um, extension there. So I'll set the email and use Boomerang to tell the email to come back into my inbox so I don't forget to follow up with them. And then I'll use that extension. So I'll have the email open and I'll click on the extension and it will let me add a task to Teamwork to look into whatever it is that I've said that I need to look into. So using those two in tandem really helps bring my customer service game up a notch so that I don't forget anything. And I have a task in my project management tool to actually do any follow up that needs to happen. And I can assign that to myself um, or a team member. So that is it. Those are your four do's and the one don't and a couple of tips on providing great customer service. So you're going to want to have a policy and a process to follow for um, your turnaround times, your refunds, password resets, member details, things like that. You do want to be asking questions in order to clarify as needed. You do want to delegate the task of customer service to somebody as soon as you can. You do want to embrace both the good and the bad feedback that you receive from people and decide whether there's anything in there for you to learn from or grow from or whatnot. Uh, and then you don't want to chalk ne negative emails, negative customer service emails up to that person just being a bad fit for you um, or not your ideal client and then brushing them off. You do want to make sure that you provide kindness and a little bit of time to everybody that takes the time to message you. And that is it for today. If you found any of this useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe and also forward it to another entrepreneur that you think needs to hear it. Together we thrive. Have a great day.